सो टुडे वी विल ट्राई टू लर्न डिपेंडेंसी इंजेक्शन हिरार्किकल डिपेंडेंसी इंजेक्शन राइट विद दिस डेमो एंड दिस इज सॉल्विंग वन प्रॉब्लम वेयर यू हैव लाइक एन ऑर्डर कंपोनेंट एंड इन दैट ऑर्डर कंपोनेंट यू हैव लाइन आइटम्स एंड पर ईच लाइन आइटम यू वॉन्ट टू अपडेट द प्राइस एंड देन क्वान्टिटी इंडिपेंडेंटली राइट एंड वंस यू अपडेट इट यू वॉन्ट टू रिसेट इट ऑल्सो एंड सेव इट ऑल्सो सो इन ऑर्डर टू सेट एंड रिसेट यू वॉन्ट द इंडिपेंडेंट सर्विस पर लाइन आइटम दैट्स अवर रिक्वायरमेंट एंड दैट इज वॉट वी वॉन्ट टू लर्न लाइक हाउ पर कंपोनेंट कैन वी इंजेक्ट अ सर्विस एंड सॉल्व दैट प्रॉब्लम so we'll do we'll start from there we'll say we'll create some service per line item we'll inject them per component and see how it behaves whether it is really uh, independent per component right and we will have one global uh, service also which will be registered as a root label we'll do that that is called as order service let's say and we will learn how to uh, use behavior subject as our state management policy so let's say i want to manage the state of all of my line items when i change one line item i am updating the component right so how we can use the behavior subject for that so that you will learn and you will learn how communication happens between component and parent component and child component mostly you have done it but let's do it with uh, with this di hierarchical dependency injection thing and uh, we'll do all of that and then we'll uh, we'll continue this session and in the next session as i as i told we'll try to put some other concept here like um let's do some other di concept like provide a setup for uh, use class and use existing those concepts how it is used actually in the project so we will improve this project to to finish this with the complete uh, di stuff right so let's start with the first one where we have a line item so i am trying to add the bootstrap first here so now uh, we'll add bootstrap And it will install dependency also, and this is the line that they have to copy and put it in. Uh, here in the style dot css, so that at least we have some style. right and to check whether styles are working or not let's put some class here from bootstrap to just check let's success so okay next so our css uh, is installed bootstrap is working so we saw that bootstrap css is working so now we will start <coughs> doing some of the coding so let's say the goal is uh, to to at least finish today uh, the entire save and cancel use case right so let's start writing code uh, in the source i'll first create the line item component let's put it inside the app line item component so i have line item let's create line item component dot ts and also at the same time i will create line item component dot html correct and then we can quickly grab some of the uh, forms from what stuff to just get the scaffolding of our html 
and by that time let's create the component so we'll say export class line item line item component and this is a component so we'll mark it as component from where we'll import this component and angular slash code correct and then we'll put some selector over here selector is uh, let's call it app uh, slash line item and then we need to put some template url template url is correct and in order to see this let me just <coughs> register this line item component and to get the form let's go to bootstrap let's quickly get some form and get this data just to put some some ui and save it remove the form we don't need form and change it let's say for now let's see whether it is coming so what we'll do is this is the component we have it let's register it in the app module so i'll declare here line item component and we'll pull it from line item folder slash line item component spelling is correct right cannot bind to name since it's not hello so hello <coughs> hello component let's remove it from here now i'll remove all of the old board i'll put the app line item and i should see the template that we created like this one okay so if this is not self ending is not working i'll just put the proper name so this is the form now we are seeing it and it is very simple we just did simple thing now let's create the model that we want to show so in the line item we want to show two thing one is uh, let's create that so i'll replace the names i'll say this one is let's say uh, price right and then next one is so here instead of email address it is a price per item and then uh, uh, aria help will remove placeholder enter price and then id is this i'll remove validation i'm just type, as type will be number now correct mm -hmm. good catch next is uh, this one should be uh, called as uh, quantity this is quantity correct and replace on the quantity and we'll say quantity type is again number no? correct and then we'll say enter quantity correct checkbox we don't need we'll remove this we need save and we need one more cancel we need save cancel <coughs> item name yes that is one thing we can put so this is one name right Home control name and here no need of input this guy whenever we'll put it basically for now i'll leave it So name is this and then our goal is to show the uh, yeah this one you can take uh, to show the final price right so let's say this is um, total price per line item and cancel I want to use warning 
So now it will show per item what is the total price per line item based on the price and quantity. This is good. So far you are with me? Yeah. So enter quantity enter price and then the goal is once you enter here something it should show the total price over here. So let's do that. So we'll, we'll assume that this is this line item component is getting um, some input let's say it is getting uh, input called as line item and that is what I want to build first this line item object so let's do that Right, so this line item we should create at some place. So inside the app, you can create your components. Right, there are two kinds of components. One is like uh, presentation component, and another is a smart component. A smart component is one who just communicates to the uh, to the services, like to major services, like say whoever is talking to HTTP or talking to the state uh, at the store level, state global state. So whoever has the logic to save and cancel and all of that, right? The actual save. So those are the smart component who takes the dependency from services and they do stuff, stuff, right? So this one is is more of like dump component line item. It's just like it is taking some input and sending some output to you, right? So let's create the, so these are component part. Let's create a core folder and work on it here as a model. So we can create some model here. First one is line, line item. item.ts and then Let's create an index file also so that I don't need to every time index.ts file and here we will export star from line item and there is nothing to export for now so it may cry so let's go back to the line item and create a class yeah I'll create export class line item and then we can create a constructor and this is a shortcut to create the item here to just put it public right so first one is name next is we can create id also id could be number and next is uh, what public um, price price is number next is quantity which is again number good so we created our object line item and we export it from core and it is line item dot cs uh, ts so next job is to go here and use that line item mm -hmm. where line item. which class name, class name. Yeah. Thank you. This is line item. Font. Yeah. Okay. Now it is visible. Yeah, but every time when you want to use the component, I think they have this. Uh, this is not. Let's delete it. Okay. But why they should have some setting here, right? To in increase the font. Let's see if it is there. Debugging editor user setting. User setting workspace setting. What is this workspace? Font tab. font size they have right you can increase this rather than <laughs> zooming it let's say make it uh, 20 how much to look
Yeah, this is more than plunker. Slowly they are going to integrate with GitHub also. This is very helpful. Also they have Firebase connection here. You can connect database directly and you can put extensions. It's just like a VS code, complete VS code, online VS code. They have collaborated with VS code also. Mm -hmm. to do this so I said 20 and then should refresh then while refreshing it is going away I guess all of the settings the last time we'll try and then we'll just zoom it I don't think that setting is working so now we can put it in GitHub yeah GitHub User settings font is getting re reset every time. We cannot change this. Mm, leave it. So uh, now it changed. <laughs> good. So this is good. This one. Yeah. <clears throat> this is exactly like a VS code. This font size is good. Yeah. Okay. So next, what we were doing? Line item we were trying to import here, right? So this is Angular code, and uh, I want to import. This is input line item. This is what we want to import. Let's say import line item from four. So now we have line item as an input coming and Let's show it also from line item. So first one is the name. And we'll show the name from line item dot name. Next is this guy. The price thing. And for price, uh, we will do two way data binding. So we will use um, banana in the box and G model. Um, and this should be equal to line dot price right this is good next one we'll do the other one price and then quantity correct this is quantity Next we is total price that we will calculate basically here, right? Total price. Yes. So let's calculate it. How do we know that we have to use banana? So when you this this bracket, it looks like a I to me. So it is more of like input. Okay. So I means input means if you want to just take this data and and input it means show it in the text box i means input means take the data from this guy line item dot quantity and put it into the uh, text box that is input so if you just need to read it i will say just put like this ng model without the without the uh, parenthesis right and this looks to me more of o so if i remove this becomes o o means output so I remember like that. So this is for output means also when text box is uh, blur happened or something happened, some event happened, right? Input event, it will put some output. It will send some output event and that should also assign into the line item dot quantity. So when you need both input and output, then you do this bracket and then uh, parenthesis. If you just want to read it and put it into text box, then you'll just use I inputting. The square bracket is for I. Right, and then this bracket is for O output. 
so that way i remember so here we need to calculate and we'll say uh, line item dot price multiply by line item dot quantity right and declaration as such well, line line item component is breaking let's go what is going on in the component so this line item we pulled it and seems okay is not correct line just line hyphen item dot component dot html and template url template is correct right declaration statement is expected in ts file okay so we want to finish this first right so this is line item and uh, comma is missing no right so what is missing here import is missing right extra import was there mm -hmm. okay so <clears throat> let's see whether it is showing it or not so we'll go here and we'll just put some some data so now i'm using just bracket why you just want to input output. just want to inject that data i for input or inject yeah. i'm just trying to inject some data inside that right and i can use now here i can just use expression syntax and send some data for example price and then all of that right or we can just create some object and send it for now so for, for now let's go to the app component app component.ts and let's create some object for now i'll create a line item is equal to new line item and then i can pass uh, first one was what on the let's put id first and then name so in the component we'll do id is 1 name is pan and price is 20 dollar and then quantity is 2 and this line item i can import it from code and and this is in the root level so i don't need double so it should show the data here and it is 20 and 2 we are taking this line item and we need to now pass it let's go and pass it this data like this good so now we can show line item one line item our goal is now to change this and cancel it save it and so on so let's start doing that so first what we will do is we'll create what should we create first now in order to achieve that so let's create the service who owns the line item first so that you can inject that line item or we can build this line item service first to achieve this functionality set and reset functionality cancel and save functionality let's do that first since we are building already line item component so inside the line item component i can create a service called as line item service <coughs> so i could have done here itself like on save button let's do here itself you could have done that like you could say for um, uh, some logic you can put here like this is the current um, price and then when you original price and then this is the current price and when they hit cancel then reset the original price just the temporary variable right you could do all here but let's delegate it to the service and then see how it looks like so basically we are saying let's put here some event so here we'll say um whenever save button is clicked i want to do something which bracket we will use uh the square bracket or the parenthesis one parenthesis parenthesis one because from the element it is coming so it is coming which event click event and this click event what i want to do on save method let's say on save do something i want to call this on save and similarly for the cancel one so we'll create another bracket like this and then click whenever cancel button is click call on cancel on saved something like that you can call these functions 
and we can log some message to see that whether functions are called. So on saved is one. <clears throat> For now, I'm just doing console log uh, saving, and then similarly other one on cancel. Okay, and then when I click, I should see the log here. So if I say save, cancel, cancel spelling is wrong, it is breaking. Actually, okay. So, so far we are good on save, on cancel we have. Now the goal is on cancel, we want to restore it to the previous price. So let's say if it was 2 and uh, some other price, I want to restore it. Cancel, cancel, it should restore. So let's do, we could do all of that logic here, but I don't want to put the logic in the component. We want to put all the business logic inside some service. <clears throat> and service is just a just a class. So always try to put your behaviors inside the service. So create a service for that called as line item service. And inside the service, what are the functions we need? Number one is save item. Save line item where you pass the line item and it will take it and save it. And this save is locally to this area. And then another one is restore line item. These are the two things. And we'll do basic logic to do to do this save and restore thing. So import again line item from core. So we are good. So we have line item and that we are importing it. So let's do now uh, save restore stuff. So in this line item, when we are getting this input, uh, this input is for the first time when you open the component. So let's say who is giving this data first time. App, app component, right? Mm -hmm. And this data, he is right now hard coding here, but basically it won't be hard coded. Maybe here you will get from database and then you will give the pricing, right? So you'll give the database, you'll get the database call and you'll get the actual line item and you will inject it. And inside this line item, uh, you are getting that input, right? So this is the first line item uh, data that comes from the server and it has to be your original line item. This is your original when you want to show that first and then people are changing it. So let's make it original line item. So let me create a, let me change this code and create here original item. So we'll create one private original line item which is of type line item and then there should be current line item which we are changing it. Correct? So you have two line items one is the current one one is the original one. An original one is getting set when input is called, when we are injecting the line item. So what we will do is, we'll create a function. We'll create a function over here called as set, and then line item. Whenever this function is called, we are getting a particular line item that you want to set it of type line item. Correct. And this line item that we are getting, we want to set it in the local service. And when you want to set it into the local service, the goal is to not replace the original line item because it has to be temporary one. So whenever you set, the goal is to take this, this set will be called when, when you change this number and it has to not update the original one. So first time, First time this line uh, set line item will be called very first time when you restore the component from the server. So let's put that data into original first time, very first time. So we'll put this data into original line item first so that you get the 
from the server whatever line item is coming you take it and you put it into the original line item and then for the current line item we will create a clone of it why we will create a clone of line item if if i just put this same line item then they both are referring to the same object right and if i change here it will basically change into the original, original also so we do not want that mm -hmm. what we want is we want a clone facility so that it it will be a same object but it will be a uh, decoupled it will be a completely new object brand new so i i'll create a function called as clone inside the line item object so let's go to the line item object and we'll create the clone so now we'll create a clone so clone is a simple function which is just create giving a new object so we'll create new line item that's the thing however it will take the value from current object so i'll take the value exactly from the current object this dot name this dot price this dot quantity all of that right so this is simple clone object clone function which will guarantee that it is returning a same same value but different object so here in this service i want this clone to come here i'll take this clone and put it into the current one so that now if you are changing you are just changing the current one you are not changing the original data so this is the set one and similarly we need the get one get line item and this is another function and it should return this dot current line item void is not assignable so clone is not returning maybe right we have to return this okay so we are good now <coughs> so this set a line item and get line item let's call it from component so we'll go here when first time data is coming from the higher level parent component we want to call our service and give the data so that it will go into the original line item so in order to achieve that let me create a setter function so did you do ever like this so far mm -hmm. directly you set the data into as a setter function so are you getting this or not yeah. so you know right there is a setter function and getter function and those are nothing but just you are assigning some data to some property but this is very nice way and cool way to pass the data from parent component to child component and from child component to some service and this i wanted to show you like this is very important so this way you know how to do communication from parent component to child component and also child component can communicate to its corresponding service so how it will do it will get the input from the parent and then it will take that data and say this dot uh, let's say line item service you need here right so i have to inject that sorry so we'll inject the line item service here so we'll say um, constructor and we'll take the line item service as a private service and then we'll use that service to save it so we'll say line item service dot this dot right this dot line item service dot line item is equal to the line item given by the parent component <coughs> in this line item service we have to get it from import it import this line item service from line item dot service right so we got the line item service where is that this one and this line item service we are saying whenever this component is uh, <coughs> Uh, restored at that time save it into the 
original so static injector so this error is coming right it is saying null inject null injector error okay so what is this mean so who is throwing this error can anyone guess so here in this constructor i am asking for some token right i am asking for line item service as a dependency injection token so who has to search now to whom we ask component asked to whom component asked to injector an injector has to check whether it has already in the um, in his key value pair if it is not there go to provider and do we have any provider so far for line item service no that is why this guy is saying for this uh, in this component i have i am getting line item service as a null and this is thrown by injector itself injector is saying i am not getting it basically so our goal is to provide it should i provide this service at module level or in this component level module line item service where should i provide this anywhere in the module also yes okay let's do that so line item service if i provide it at the module level what will happen now line item service so it is provided now so we should not have any error module that is line item service is app module dot ts service which one is long service correct try so now it is hooked up and this thing price of undefined all of that so line item is hooked up and we'll save it and uh, here uh, we are setting it but we do not have the get that is why it is failing so here we set it but there is no okay. get for the for the html here you want to use that line item object and for that you need a getter in this component so let's create the getter part also so get line item as a function that should return from it should ask to whom line item service dot line item and the, here you should have return same thing we should do in the line item service return we have it already so is that clear anything any doubt so far right so you remember we we put the line item service at the module level at the root level right so next what we will do is let's create the order object order component to see multiple line items so i'll go to the app component and create a folder called as order <coughs> and order has multiple line items let's say so let's create the order dot component spelling is correct order component and inside the order i will create another thing called as order dot component dot html and let's move app component this data to order here so order will have multiple line items so we'll create a div and inside div we'll use ng for loop correct and then let line item of multiple line items let's say i have line items like this i'll take the uh, each one and then should be iterate and then we are passing the each one to line item object line item component line item and here i can pass line item from that loop as a just input mm -hmm. like this 
this HTML makes sense? Okay. So here we'll go to the component and I'll I'll copy some of the code from here. I think they have already that uh, use case to add and then they had something here right click and then see all of this they have here <laughs> you don't need to write the boilerplate code again and again say so suppose i want to create a component here i can just delete this for now i'll show you how here you just do right click in this folder level and then it will say angular generator create a component and put the name Let's say order dot order uh, just order it will put dot component for you I think and hit enter I think see it's done it created the HTML CSS everything it's just they are using angular CLI also and they will register also you'll see the magic here I think they are registering also see order component got registered so it is cool uh, it is more than plunker that's what I I love this way it's more than Visual Studio Code yeah it is yeah and see it also created the folder also so i don't need even to do manually all of that right mm. so for now i'm uh, just say uh, let's move this order at the app level since i had already order object order folder so we got the order and it is registered free for us <laughs> we don't need css i'll delete this css for now not this one cancel thank you for asking delete this css and then we have html and our HTML uh, uh, got changed, right? So we'll put our own HTML one more time. So basically, this component is now wired up. This is good. We get the help. And basically, the idea is this component, order component, is a higher level component. It is a parent component, and it has a child component called as line item. So here we will create the list of orders, line orders, and then we'll give it. So let's do that. In the constructor, let me create line items, line items. Yeah, or you can do on init also. That's fine. Leave it whatever way it was. So in the on init, and then let's create some line items here. I'll create line items, which is a line item array. And this array, we will just initialize it for now. We'll say, are you all following me? Yeah. yeah. So we'll just initialize it. New line item. This line. Thank you. Will import the only thing is missing is the auto import here you have to uh, go by your own that's they are working maybe on it there are two things which interpolation where we'll we'll use i think in the uh, Total quantity side we were using, right? Yeah, we use it. Like when do we use it? When you want to just read it, basically. When you want, you want to exp run the when you want to just run the expression. Uh. <laughs> we afraid, right? Even I was afraid. I was thinking whose whose reflection it is. <laughs> it was not matching you guys like face, so so that interpolation is just when you want to run an expression that's it you want to run an expression and see the output so you just use the interpolation at the html in the html page so for now let's do this some data let's put some data line i had some data right somewhere app component ah yeah this one so i'll cut it from here i don't need here go to order and then state put it here one by one Pen and then another product is eraser. Okay, so why this one is crying? It's not as I able to string. Who is saying string? Yeah, first is name I use. But ID we changed. Yeah, ID, name, price, and quantity. We are good. So there, there, this. Uh, uh, this is missing. It takes some time to un to believe that we have changed. Uh, so that's fine. Uh, see, this is this is old Microsoft uh, in Visual Studio. Also, uh, 
is the same thing. You changed it, and they don't know whether it is changed or not. They don't believe. They don't trust that you changed. So what next? So we got these line items, and we want to inject it from here. So let's inject. I <laughs> the code is not there. That's what I was saying. Where is that code? So what what error we are getting? CSS, right? So let's remove the CSS. Good. Save it. Comma is optional. Extra comma is fine. So let's put here some code now. Uh, where is why they they were crying? Somebody was crying. Or double order object. Uh, we had two folder initially, right? That's why. Line item is fine. I am doing it correct. Don't try to upgrade me. Okay. So let's go to the ignore all of the imports things. It will take some time to to them to understand whether you did it correctly or not. Believe on yourself. Ng for, and then let's write down the code again. What was that? Let line item. So today we'll ask a seven forty five around to him to come. Off line items because it will take some time. This this one, it seems simple, simple use case we took, but it will take some time to build. And then once take the line item, you need to pass into app line item, and then we'll import it. Clear. Order component dot css. I already removed it. So these are the two line items that we are injecting. So now it should show two line items here. Let's see what is going on. So what is happening so far? We created this line item collection, and in the order component HTML, we are iterating through all of the line item and creating independent line item component and passing the Data line item, and in this component, yeah, go ahead. Square braces for the input. Yeah. That is to get data from the DOM or both component and DOM. So with respect, it is always with respect to the element because it is we are putting it in the element, so it is with respect to element. So coming into element when we say out, going out from element. That's how it is. That means a component. Uh, yeah, this is the element is a com. Uh, for now, this is a custom directive we have created, right? So component is nothing but a directive because once you create the component, it gives you the selector. That selector, um, sorry, it it says that where we need to apply this um, component, and you give this as a selector. <coughs> so this is custom directive you created, your own element you created, HTML element, right? It is taking forever to to save or refresh. So next is what. Now we wanted to see next, so let's refresh it. So order component, I think we have to register. No, they have already registered. Hello component, I can delete. I need it. What's going on? Starting dev server. So we are not seeing anything. Why? What about this app order component? Did we put somewhere? Mm -hmm. No. So let's put that. See, app component is empty. Let me put this. Okay. So now you see two. So here magic will begin now. Uh, fun will come from here now. So we have two line items. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when I Put some data. It is going to set all the way to service because when I set some data here, it will go to this component, and component set function will be called. When I save it, it will call some save function. Let's do that. So if I change this, 
23? See, it is changing to both of them. Yes or no? Yeah. Is, is it desirable? No. I wanted to change, let's say, eraser, but it is changing the price of? Pen. 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 Or whatever pencil. <coughs> Actually, both, both, both are eraser. Yeah. That's the problem, right? Where is that one? Order. Pencil and eraser and line item. Yeah, let's change the price. Let us see this. Yeah. So why it is happening like that? So we give line items. It goes to the component as an input, uh, a single line item, and we assign to line item service that line item, right? For the next one, again it will run and it will assign the eraser. First it will assign and then next eraser, pencil and eraser. And since this service is what? For one line item, because it has just one line item entry, if you check that service. Mm -hmm. So it is just replacing both the eraser. And it is replacing with the last one. And this is what the problem I described at the first time when I was teaching you the hierarchical dependence injection, why it is needed. I was saying you, you want to change the resume of one candidate and you do not want to update the same data to the other candidate. This is that problem. That is why I asked you where should we register the line item service, at which level? Do you want to put it at the global level or you want to provide it at an uh, independent level? So this service is purely made for this area, just this much, for that component. So rather putting it into the app module, you have to put it in. That is the correction. That is why I was asking, are you sure? And you guys were saying, yes, we can define it wherever. So this is what this class is. So we want to understand the dependency injection. And you cannot just assign anything anywhere. And it, it needs some understanding. So now you understand, right? Now you see the value that where it should be registered is important. So we'll go to the component level now. Even if you go to the order, order level, it is again the same mistake. Because the order component, if you register, it is again one thing. Under that, you have multiple things. So you want per line item this service to be injected. So let's do here that thing. So providers and same thing we'll put here. And we already have uh, import, so I'll just put this. Now you should see independently. See, pencil and is This is good, right? And I can now update the independent thing. I can put this price. It is not changing the other price. Cool. So this is done. So we are good. We we can. Uh, change this and we can restore it also. Let's do the restore part where you change this and restore. So next is restore. So on, rest on cancel, we want to restore it. So let's call the function called as restore in the line item service dot restore. And what did restore should do? It will undo the other thing. So let's say restore. So whenever restore will come, it should do the swap operation. Take the um, current line item. This dot line item is equal to this dot original line item. That's the thing it has to do. Correct? It should take the original line item and put it into line item. That is what we are displaying. Are you all following? So let's try that. So save it. Change that value here. Restore it. It's not working. Why? Are we calling this function? On cancelled. On cancelled. And restore. Line item. Name, name was not correct. Let's change. So, <clears throat> so now you have restore functionality done and see if you would have put this service at the global level, it was a mistake again. So we did the restore, let's do the save and on save, uh, we can just here log it some, some data like console.log restored 
the original line item now line item right i can see the see it is 12 to i change it to something and i cancelled it it will say restore it to again back to pencil with 12 to so logging uh, are important you can log so next job is to really send this data from server that is our next job so what we will do is in the order right now i have hard coded it that data i'll cut this data and put it into some service i'll go to core create a service called as order sorry so again you can code code by your own to learn or you can use angular cli it's up to you so if i use angular cli i can do here right click generate service and i can just put the name of the service called as order and it will automatically register it into the module level mm. if you go to the app module by default they are here basically order service which is we want so our time is saved now a little bit and i here i'll create the line items correct so let's create line items and i want to take you now a little bit towards rxjs side this is simple you could do this line item but when you line item is changed you have to update that line item to the constructor also, or to the component also so let's say if this line item was simple line items like this what is the problem let me show you first line item array because people ask why why we are putting rxjs why we are complicating stuff so let's see that what benefit rxjs will give and we used to solve this by doing our own pop sub you remember in when we were doing the previous uh, session we used to solve that so which is not needed basically if you see so in the constructor we are setting this data correct and then we can ask get all line items or we can say get line item list get line item line items something like that right so then if you do like this kind of coding where you said get line items and then you have to keep asking this get line items whenever you are changing this guy so we used to do differently right we used to uh, change this array and then we used to publish a message saying that changed happened and so that component ask again the store and get the changed array and display that you remember add user use case when when some component so here you will have a function called as save line item let's say so if i'll take this save line item and i'll update this array once array is updated i have to tell uh, someone that it is updated so that go and get it correct so that in order to avoid that you can make this observable once this guy is observable line items is observable so whoever is subscribed whenever you change this automatically they will get the subscription and they will update automatically are you seeing the value why i am saying to make it observable if i keep it as a as a regular poco collection and if i update it here in the save line item then once update is done you have to let them know that it is updated by by raising some event or something or yeah mostly it should be a pop up and then in the component let's say in the order component here we have to subscribe it and get the data from the service so what i can do is i can just create a data like this and we'll call it some data some let's say uh, uh let's say if it is coming from the server so we'll, we'll say data from server let's say it came from the server and basically you will get it from server by doing http call i am avoiding that http call for now and then we'll create line items as a observable here right so i'll use behavior subject do you know behavior subject yeah so this behavior subject of type line item and then give the data from server so behavior subject come comes from rxjs okay what is 
so behavior subject comes from rx yes and what it does it it creates so subject is like a com amalgam of observer and observable right <coughs> so the subject and behavior subject different is like in behavior subject you can give the default data and you can ask at any time what is your current data that's the difference but if you have a regular subject you cannot just say default is this like you remember start with we did that operator right start with some data so behavior subject is mix of that it will say that start with this this data that is provided and also at any time you can ask hey subject what is your value and it will give you the value also it's just like a reactive form also when you did reactive form in reactive form there is a form dot values which will give you all of the value of the form and it under the hood it uses the same behavior subject so this is the line item collection that it, we are giving and we are asking why this is crying so we should use this here so now at any time i'll ask what is the line items i'll get this data let's see it in in action so i'll get this line item and since this is a behavior subject it takes the default value and it will give you the moment component will load it will show you so let's go to the order component and fix this code so here i use order service Hmm. You can put it from. So, are you getting any value from this session, or it is just like same? It's little bit helpful, right? It is more on uh, just TI side, like dependency injection side, and some discipline that I am trying to uh, maintain here that will help you also to learn, like this kind of discipline, like. The order service is a service whose job is to go to talk to HTTP and send the data to the server. Mm -hmm. So if this service is something who is doing some side effect, I will not put it into the presentation con component. I'll put it into the higher level component, which is like a smart component. So we call it order component is a smart component. Line item component is a dumb component. Why it is dumb? Because it does not know about any side effect. So it is a item potent object so it is a item potent means it is a pure function kind of thing in pure function what happens 10 times if you call with the same same input it will repeat it will give you the same output at 10 times right but if it is a side effect function let's say if there is a side effect inside that function let's say you are calling it 10 times you will get 10 times different values because it depends on some other stuff and it is changing some of the things but pure functions are what if the input is same, output is always same. That's the uh, called as pure function. And this component is pure function because whenever you will give, give the line item, and if that line item is always same, let's say, it will always show you the same data, same value. Suppose line item has price 20 and quantity 20, it will always show 2020. If you 10 times give you 2020, it will keep showing the same thing. But for the for the order service, it is not like that. For order service, if you are saving 10 times, or you are updating 10 times, it's not the same case. It is going to the server and updating 10 times and changing some of the uh, other third party, right? So it is, it has some side effect and it depends on some different, different things. So that's the difference. So in this order service, we will take the order service here. You could say that why to take order service here and then not save it, not take it here directly in this line item service. You could take it here directly and save your order from here because save button is here itself right save line item you could just take the order service dot save you have line item you can give line item and save it but that will basically break your um, design so your design should be clean saying that your um, presentation component should be as dumb as possible and there are many benefits for that one is if you have less smart component there is less chance that code will break if you have more smart components there are more chances that they will break because you have more smart people they can think now and they can tweak your code but if you have dumb people more then you manage better basically you just give them and they will always do the same thing you don't need to worry so you just put one smart people around two or three dumb people 
and that smart people is capable of doing uh, managing and all of that but those dumb people will help that smart guy to solve that problem and then you have like hub like two or three smart people around then there are some helpers so it's something like that so if you have less brain it's good if you have more brains working on something then there is a chance that conflict will happen right so that's the same thing that's the idea so try to avoid having more smart components so don't try to inject all of the services in your final component this is this is a presentation component which just present some data so let's do that sorry for that digression so we take that order service from core and let's put it into the core index also so that it will not try again export from order service okay so we take this order service and we should get the data uh, so this dot line items is equal to service dot line items which is basically observable this line item is observable from here we are returning um, line items so basically this is a subject either you can use it as a observable or you can use it as a uh, observer it can behave both way but once you expose a subject to the client client can also change this data so don't expose like this basically if you expose entire subject someone can just update directly from there so here i can directly update now i have a capability to say line items dot next and put some data and it will update the collection you don't want to do that right are you following me so so what we should do when you are designing your service just expose the thing that you want to expose not the entire capability all data you don't want to expose so let's change that code so i'll create a line items which is just a private thing so i'll make this guy as a private okay and we can make uh, change this name called as f control h i think right okay so instead of line items let call it some bad name for now uh, line items uh, subject for now some bad name that you don't want to expose but the good thing that you want to expose let's keep it clean so we'll call line items simple right and this will be line item subject dot so subject is amalgam of both observable and observer so now we will give observable from this subject just the observable part so that they just subscribe they cannot change the data they subscribe the uh, output from this service so i'll say subject dot as observe observable so now you are saying hey subject give your observable part to the client so now we are exposing this guy so if you come here i should not just change now data right this is more of like i am subscribing only i am not changing now this next if i cannot i am not supposed to do next here now so i'll just subscribe this data so what i'll do this line item is no more vanilla array it is a observable of observable of line items so observable we can pull it from rxjs again correct so now this is observable of line items so whenever you have observables in your uh, component always consider to destroy them so that you leak less memory right and in order to destroy you know right you can implement on destroy interface and implement that function and destroy and unsubscribe it right but i prefer to just do it free so angular does it free if you are binding it with the html so let me bind this to html and then angular will take care of destroying so here i am saying line items of line items and this line items is no more why it is saying cannot find order service in where Mm 
index.ts here. So we spell it Correct. Thank you. So service. And export is undefined. So spelling is wrong. We have uh, core index. <clears throat> so it is good now, right? Or we have still errors. Okay, so see the error is coming. I was trying to explain the same thing which we are getting. So what error we are getting? You see this error? Mm -hmm. Cannot find the default. Cannot find the default. Yeah. It labels such as array, mm -hmm. right? So that is saying it, it is expecting array, but we are giving just a some subject, mm -hmm. right? If you go here in the order component, it is expecting this guy as an array, but we are giving a not the subject, but at least we are giving observable because this line items is nothing but a observable, returning an observable of line item. Correct? So, in order to um, uh, pass this test or this error, in order to fix that error, you could do two things. One thing is you could just say dot subscribe here. In this line items dot subscribe since it is observable it is returning observable you can subscribe and then on subscription you will get the data which is which will be the actual array of uh, line items you can get the line items and then you can assign these dot line items is equal to a line item something like that you can do and once you subscribe like this um, this dot line items if this was just an array, let's say, if this was just an array, you could do like this. You have to subscribe that observable, get the data and assign it to the uh, here. And then it is, then you will get the line items properly. But this, but then once you do this subscribe, what is happening once you do this subscribe then you have to unsubscribe also so let's see if this is not good i think it should be fine here it should show some data so order line items line item and we did ng on it this observable line item so subscribe and we are assigning it also it should be fine what error we are getting nothing right There is no error, no page. What is wrong? This is telling lie. This order service, I have it here. And this order service we are exposing also, right? From here. What is wrong? Spelling is correct? Yeah. So let me log it here to see some data it is coming or not, right? Can we talk? Let's say console dot log line items. Undefined, right? It is coming undefined. So means order service is not giving this data. No, it is imported, right? It takes time to understand to VS code, so you ignore it. Line items. So line items uh, from order service is coming undefined. Let's go to the order service, and that is why I do I do test even development so that my uh, before I use them it should be tested. But for now we are not doing we are focusing on DI part. 
So see here, what are we doing? So we are saying we create this observable before we assign the data. That is why it is wrong. So let's create this data, but little above. So once we create this array, let's put the data here itself. Like this. Okay. Once you created this data, then assign that data to the subject and expose the function called as as observable. And now you got the two line items. Right? So what is happening? Once you are getting this two line item, why it is not rendering still? So we are giving to the line item component it is taking as input assigning it to the service and on get it is asking get to the service what else is going wrong app line item so let's see if line item is receiving it or not, right? So what we'll do here, we will do some logging. Receive line item. So it is not getting called, right? So this is not this component itself is not called. And why that one is not called? So if you go here, um, we are receiving this data, we subscribe that data and then we didn't assign it, that's the problem, right? So we are not assigning it. This dot line items is equal to the line items. Now it should show. Good. <coughs> so this is one option. We still check everything is good, right? So if you do not have test case, you have to, you have to keep checking every time you change your code. And that is why test driven development is helpful. Like you don't need to check your code because your tests are still running. So you are sure that things are still good. So once you this subscribe, you have to cache this data, uh, this subscription to some object, this dot subscription, and then you have to uh, wait till destroy and then uh, unsubscribe it, right? So we should not, uh, in order to avoid that, what we can do is, we can just say observable of this line item directly, and then get rid of all of this code. Just keep it simple. like this and then we'll say this dot line items as a asynchronous so once you say like this angular will take care of it angular will automatically uh, bind it and unsubs uh, and whenever this component is destroying it will unsubscribe it right so now we did that thing let's do the output thing so do we have output here we'll create a um, uh, in the component now we'll say save save is pending right so let's do here some event here. So we'll say this dot line item service dot save line item. And then we'll pass this dot current line item. Like this. So we are saying now at this time just commit this save this line item to the service. So on save it should put some logic here. What we should do at this time when we are saying committing, then we have to commit to the original one. So now we are replacing the original one with the current one. Current line item. And once you replaced your stuff here, it is replaced, right? So this is the correct time to emit a message, to publish a message that I am I have saved from my presentation component will say I am I am done. So here we can say uh, emit something. So I'll say this dot uh, line item saved or something, something like that dot emit. And popsub is free here basically. So we'll just use at the rate output. 
and we'll create this guy as a new emitter or event emitter. Event emitter. Thank you. We'll create new event emitter of type line item. That's all. And this is in output. That's it. Event emitter is also output. Yeah. So we are good, right? So we have event emitter. Let's emit it. Whenever it is emit, so we have to listen it at the parent component. I'll go to the order component here, and then here somewhere I can listen. I can say now which packet I should use. Is it coming from this element or it is going in this element? From this element. From this element. Parenthesis. Parenthesis. Oh. And this is custom event I created. So see now you created your own element completely. It's just like your own input who has its own event coming out of it. So that's the power of component, right? So now you take it and say on line item save. On line item saved. And then I'll get some data that I'll take it as an event. And this data I have to take it at component level. So see how redirect is happening. The data is coming all the way to parent and from parent to the it will go to the service now. So here we'll put uh, the function and then we'll get the line item that we want to save. And since this is a smart component, it can talk to the service who is responsible to save this data into the database. We can say this dot order service dot save line. Uh, we don't have that function. Uh, we have it. We have it, right? Save line item. Oh, sorry. Here, right? Save line item. And I have to pass the line item that I am getting it. Correct? It's clear. So let's see if it is saving. So here we will say a message called as console dot. It will say received received line item saved message like this right so we received this message and then we want to now save it and this service dot save let's go to the service so uh, here if i do some changes go to console and cancel it it will say restored and when we say save it it will say saving that guy is saying this is presentation component is saying saving and this master component is saying i received the line item but it received undefined. Why? So let's see where we are emitting. We are not giving the data while emitting. Right? Where is that one? <clears throat> see here we are not giving the data. So let's say that. This dot line. I can ask from service also. So that source of truth is service. Get the Ask the service give me the data. And if I save now, I get the actual data so this is saying so if i say some data uh, and then hit save it is getting the data line item received line item same as so from here i will just send it to the service and in the service i have to update the array with the new new data correct so what i can do is here i can say this dot so in order to push the new array i can use this completely this subject i can just say next and then put the complete new array rather than just modifying one entry i can just always create the new list of array and just push it to the uh, the subject so what i can do is this dot basically that is what will happen right in the server it will go and it will save the price uh, or uh, line items all of them and then get the new set of line items and replace it during the save so I'll take this line item and 
and once this line item is coming i can update the array so i'll say this dot uh, this subject dot next and here you can pass the new set of array so that automatically it will emit and who is taking who is listening this um, on this subject who is listening who is who has subscribed on this observable line items who has subscribed that order component correct because it takes the line items and it is subscribed it automatically so whenever you push the new set of uh, array automatically this component will get it and it will refresh it and it will show it that's the beauty you use you know right when we used to change the store we used to publish a message some handler used to change the store and then handler used to publish ki i am done and then uh, whoever is the ui component you remember some ui who has to listen that and then render the entire table that was so much task we used to do rcs is free now with rcs it is free since you already wired up you already are saying that this line items is observable means whenever i am doing a change you automatically get it and you automatically refresh your ui so see uh, this will work now so you'll come here and we'll do the next on the subject so always consider creating a subject so that you um, do the whole thing so here we will just replace the uh, the current data right so we'll say this dot and i told you like uh, from the subject you can ask the current value also so i'll say dot value right and this way you will get the current array the list of array the two array the value will give you the both of them so we'll take this value so we'll, well, we can just log it here console dot i hate writing this console dot log we'll do some logger service next time console log and we'll say this is our previous data this and now i'll update this data right so what is the next data so i can create the new data here we'll say uh, constant new data is equal to the current data dot map and then i can take that value and if as dot id is matching with the given line item id if this is matching then take the line item that component is giving otherwise just use the same line item so this way i just <coughs> created a new array with the updated data updated line item so i have all of the line item i got from the value i, I did the map on it map operator and i am just filtering out the exact id which is matching and, and if that is matched is then take the item which is coming from here otherwise the same one and then i'll say um, just log it so that you see in the log also what is the new one so this is the new data so i i would say just to hands on on this one to improve yourself on the this stuff that we are learning here so this dot data so go home and then watch this video and do it basically next time i'll ask you to do something new on it so this new data is now pushed into the subject so automatically you will get the subscription and your view will be entering here so let's see that in action so i'll zoom this out little bit here so um i cannot split it right okay so let's say here we post uh, we said uh, 34 and 56 new quantity and when i save see this is the previous data this is the new data it is received and then service is saving it now so let's see what was the previous uh, and then new one right so this is very important and this is the accuracy we want this much of accuracy so once you and then see received line item is all all here is invoked are you saying this received line item is called from the presentation component so the moment i change the subject automatically it went to the parent component and parent component pushed that data to the child component and child component received the new item now and your ui is re-rendered automatically so you don't need to listen and then re-render read table you know replace or it will for now it is re-rendering completely and we can improve the performance so for now what is happening is 
it is re-rendering the entire <coughs> uh, list here in the order. Since the new array came, it is now re-rendering the entire loop. So if there were 2000 um, entries, then this is basically replacing all 2000 entries. So performance wise, it is not good. But you can improve the performance by tweaking it something that we will learn later on. So basically there is a tracking thing. You can track it by track by ID is their concept. We will learn all of that. So did he cover that tracking thing? So track by ID is a concept where you can say that, okay, I will give you all of the set, but don't refresh everyone. Just refresh the ID which I am giving you to. Right? So that way it will watch, okay, all of these IDs that I have, they have not changed. Only this particular ID is changed. Let's say if this ID was 2, for ID 2, only I change the price and value. So Angular will get, the parent component will get all of the items, let's say, right? But when you put track, track, uh, track by um, ID, then this component will watch each line item, okay, with the existing one. And it will see for each ID, it is not changing. Only for ID number 2, it is changing. So let's replace just that one. So if you see uh, the 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 output, it is very magical at that time. Uh, it's very magical. So if you see like this, so see, um, let's go to the this area. So here, um, if I change any one, you will see all of them are refreshing. That's the uh, magic happens. So if I change here, see this div entire div is replacing. This is changing. Right? So reflow happens completely. But if you put the track by ID, then only one particular element, one particular entry will refresh. It will not refresh the entire row. And you will just see that when you do F12, live it will show you that only this is just updated. And there are some tools that you can install. It will show you the color also, which element got updated. So, so this ends actually hierarchical dependency injection thing so with this example you know now that uh, which service you have to inject where that was the motto of this um, exercise so now you know that for the order service it has to go to the module level app module level however the line item service should be in the component level and even in the component level you can access the order service and which will be always global because order service is always at the root level singleton right so you could always access the order service in the line item uh, component also you can get that as injected and directly call that we could do that but we didn't do that because of the practice that we are following is uh, only the smart components should have the services which are going which are having some side effects okay good Thanks. Yeah.